Get in here, get in here, get in here because I'm going to teach you how to flirt so that you can attract almost any man that you could ever want. I'm going to tell you that these tips work very, very, very well. In fact, sometimes they work too well because I've been using all of these and baby, I got more men chasing me than I know what to do with sometimes, baby. These are tips that anyone can use, but they are especially effective when you are trying to attract someone who's got masculine energy. If you can't tell already, baby, I am someone who walks around with lots and lots and lots of feminine energy. I've always been like this, even since I was a little boy. And with that understood, I, for myself, am more attracted to men who've got strong masculine energy. So all of my flirting techniques have been developed specifically for attracting and engaging those types of men. So if you're looking to attract someone with masculine energy, then you're in the right place, all right? Now, it wasn't always a great flirt because how it used to be was that I would see a guy that I liked, maybe I was at a restaurant or, you know, the grocery store, wherever, and then I would look at him, I'd make eye contact, wait for him to make eye contact back with me, and then I'd look away. And I'd look at him, and I'd look away. Or maybe I'd catch him looking at me first, and I'd look back, and I'd look away. And then in my mind, I think what I hoped was that he would see me recognize that I look back at him and then he would make his way over to me, shoot his shot, we'd exchange numbers and then we'd be married and we'd live happily ever after. Can you imagine that how ineffective that strategy was? It never worked. So it occurred to me, huh, if I want to attract more men to me, then I need to do the things that work. The things that have worked in my life as well as active within the lives of many of the women that I've coached throughout the years is being able to be active in how we attract men's attention. So here's tip number one on how to flirt so you can attract almost any man that you want. You need to dress in a way that communicates femininity and attractiveness. Now what do I mean by that? What I mean by that is this, is that I don't care who the man is, I don't care how brilliant he is, I don't care how much of a gentleman he is, at the end of the day, they see you before they hear you. So in order for him to be able to be attracted to you enough to come up to you and talk to you and learn more about you and see that you are the person he's been waiting on his whole life, he first has to be attracted to you. So the first thing that we have to do when we're trying to attract mask and energy is look at how we dress. Do you dress in a way that's going to inspire a man to look at you and be intrigued by you and want to talk to you. So are you going out all the time in sweats? That's not going to attract him. Maybe once y'all are already together and he knows your personality, he knows your spirit, y'all spend time together, he's in love with you, then you start wearing the sweats all the time. But before then, especially when you're trying to meet that man, you need to dress in clothes that are going to be fitted to your body, all right? Now, everybody's body is different. So what I always tell people is I say, identify the parts of your body that you know are your best traits. If you know that you've got beautiful bosoms, then wear an outfit where your girls are going to show in the right way, all right? If you know that you've got sexy legs, then wear an outfit where your legs can show properly, all right? If you are like me and you know that you got some cake on you, baby, I'm thicker than a snicker, honey. When If you know you built like that, then you need to make sure that you wear clothes that's going to emphasize your shape. So like one of my tricks is this, even when I'm working out, you know, because you know there's sometimes the gentlemen who come in and out the gym. What I'm going to do is I'm going to wear some nice, some nice fitted sweatpants or, or a nice pair of shorts and nice and fit it the right way, all right? And But then my top, I'm not going to wear something that's real long and frumpy that comes over my butt. What I'm going to do is I'm going to wear sort of a tighter top so when you look at my silhouette, it goes like this. You see what I'm saying? I need you to see my silhouette because it's attractive, all right? The thing is this, we use the way that we dress and we use our body as a way to almost be like a Venus flytrap. We're using it to suck in their attention, to trap them in a way, not a negative way. That's why they call it thirst trap. A thirst trap is not always a bad thing, all right? What we're trying to do is create a king trap, all right? So we're dressing in a way that can pull in their attention so that we can then use step number two. Eye contact, baby. When you're dressing in a way that is feminine, that is seductive, that is beautiful, and it pulls in his attention, the next step at that point in time is to use your eyes to invite him in, all right? So let's go back to the example I gave earlier. You're at a grocery store, you see a guy that you're interested in, and then you catch him looking at you or you're looking at him first regardless. When you look at him, don't do what a lot of us do and look away real fast, all right? Because the reality is that he's looking at you because you're dressed nicely. He's looking at you because he's attracted to you. He's looking at you because of the energy that you're giving off. He's obviously attracted to you. So when you look at him, one of the things that I've had to learn to do is to give eye contact 
for three seconds at minimum. Now, why do I say three seconds? Because I wanted to do it three times as long as I would normally do it. How I would normally do it was like this. Look and look away. That was barely a second. But when I force myself to do it for at least three seconds, what I'm doing is I'm creating enough time for a connection to be built and creating enough time and space for him to then feel invited over to me, all right? Let me give you some examples on how you can do this whole eye contact thing, all right? Because I don't want y'all out here looking creepy like this, all right? So here's one suggestion on what you can do. I call it just giving a smirk or a smile, all right? So you look over, and remember we're counting to three. So you look over, you catch him looking at you. You look over, you look, and then you smile like that. Show teeth. One, two, three. And then you look away. Now I'll tell you this. For folks who are not accustomed to giving eye contact, where eye contact can sometimes feel a little uncomfortable for you, recognize this, that everyone feels that way. And because we all feel that way, often in our minds when we're giving someone eye contact, we think that we're doing it longer than we really are. And it's just because we're not used to doing it. So I say count to three, because when you count to three, it actually is not that long that you're looking at them. Here's what happens when you don't count to three. You think that you're looking at him like this, and looking away, how he interprets it is this, is that, you, is that you're looking at him like this. That's how he interprets it, because you're doing it for much less time than you think. So three seconds is the is your baseline. Another thing you can do when you're looking at him, now this is for the advanced level folks, for the folks who know how to wink. I know how to wink, because I used to practice it in the mirror when I was in high school. I remember I used to literally sit in the bathroom and practice winking in the mirror. I could go like this, I could go like this, and I did all of them, all right? What I do is I look at them for three seconds, but I give a wink. So I look over, now this is advanced. All right, I look and I'll go. And I look away. Or another way you can go, you crack your lips open just a little bit when you do this one, you go. That you say a little part of my lips and you look away. That is the ultimate of saying, come here, but you're doing it with your eyelash, okay? It's very discreet and it's saying, come here. Come here. He's gonna smile at that. He's gonna love that. His little heart is gonna jump out of its chest, baby. His stuff is gonna be at full attention when you do that, baby. It works, trust me, darling. Another thing you can do, now this is real cutesy if you don't wanna be winking, cause some of y'all say, listen, if I wink, I'm gonna look crazy, all right? Here's another one, I got you, boo. Do a smile and a giggle. So you look at him, three seconds. We ain't letting go of this three seconds thing, all right? You look at him go like this, you go. <laughs> and then you look away, like that. All right, so let's do it again. One, two, three. <laughs> Four, one, two, three. <laughs> Lean your head to the side when you do it. <laughs> and then you look away. That's letting him know that you are engaged. That's letting him know that you are interested. That's letting him know that you are intrigued, darling. It works very well. The thing you have to remember about masculine energy is this, is that while masculine energy is very, very, very strong, masculine energy is inherently more insecure than feminine energy. They don't do well with rejection, which is why masculine energy men generally will not shoot their shot. They are not going to come over and flirt with you unless they believe that there's a high likelihood that you are interested in them. The mistake that so many of us make is that we think that masculine energy is supposed to be the hunter at all times, and we think that they are supposed to pick up on our small silent cues, and they're supposed to come over and shoot their shot, even though they don't know if they're gonna be rejected or not. It doesn't happen that way. That's why they're not coming up and talking to you right now because they don't feel invited in. So when you're dressed nicely, you're inviting in their eyes. When you are giving them that nice eye contact with a smile, with a giggle, or with a wink, you are now letting them know, hey, I'm interested in you. So now they've gotten all these cues that let them know, hey, I can come over to her and it's likely that I'm not going to get rejected. Once he feels that way, he's going to come over to you and he's going to take it from there. He's going to be so engaged that you won't really have to do any work from that point forward, but you're going to have to get the ball rolling because you have to remember that he is afraid of rejection and he needs to feel invited in. The third tip is this. Once you are talking to him, if you really want to flirt, one of the things that is very effective, but you need to be careful with this, is touching him. So when you're talking to him and he makes a joke that you think is funny, laugh, but when you laugh, touch his arm very gently. Oh, you are so funny. You see what I did with that? I'm not just, oh, you're so funny. Mm, too much. 
Oh, you're so funny. Or when we're having a conversation and we have a good enough rapport that I feel comfortable doing this. One of the things I may do is I touch his knee when I'm talking to him. So picture how seductive this is, all right? So you're talking to them. You're looking them in the eyes as you're talking about whatever you're talking about. And you're saying, you know, another point I want to make to you was this. And you put your hand on his knee and you're rubbing your hand on his knee as you're talking. And yeah, da 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 da. And oh my God, da 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 da. And you touch his arm, but you're looking him in his eyes as you're touching him, all right? That shit works like a charm, baby. And I say be careful when you touch on them because if you touch them too close to certain places, they're going to get turned on. And when they get turned on, their mind shuts off and their stuff becomes their brain, okay? Trust me on this one, all right? Now, here's why I say be careful about where you touch and how you touch them because the thing about men is this, is that when you turn us on, our brains shut off. It's just how it works, baby, okay? So if you're trying to flirt with him, especially if you're looking for your king, you're looking for someone to be able to have a meaningful relationship with or at least get to know in a meaningful way, you don't want to turn him on too quickly because if you do that, he's not gonna be able to continue to hear you and get to know you. And most importantly, he may not see you as someone who's got wifey potential if he feels that you're pursuing him sexually or very aggressively through touch. So the way that you touch is this. Focus on these key areas, knee, or arm when you touch them. Touching their knee is, is affectionate, it's lightly seductive, but it's not explicitly sexual. Same with touching their arm. Where you wanna stay away from is never go more than halfway up their thigh. When you go more than halfway up their thigh in terms of where you touch, you are now getting into the region of their stuff. Okay, and when you get into that region, his mind can't help but think about you touching it. Now that's cool if you're trying to be his jump off, but if you're trying to be seen as more than that, don't go there, all right? And here's the other thing, for masculine energy men, they want to pursue us, they want to pursue you, baby. So when you are up here coming across like you're trying to seduce him too prematurely, then you're taking away a key part of his role and something that he gets a lot of gratification from. And so he may turn off to you, he doesn't want to be pursued sexually. He wants to know that you're attractive, that you're attracted to him. He wants to know that if and when the time comes, that if he wanted to get it, that you'd be open to it because clearly there's a mutual attraction. But what he doesn't want is for you to come across like you are going after him sexually. So when you touch him, like I said, remember, arms or knees. The fourth tip is this be engaging. And when I talk about being engaging, what I'm talking about is actively listening to him when he talks. I don't know if you figured this out yet, but masculine energy men love to hear the sound of their own voice and they love to believe that you like hearing their own voice, all right? And in a lot of cases, we do like to hear them talk. We enjoy it, which is why we're such good listeners most of the time. But some of y'all don't do good with listening. Some of y'all are talking to him and y'all are so excited about the conversation that you're cutting him off when he's in the middle of talking. If you are cutting off a man in conversation, you're doing Doing something wrong. Do not cut him off because how you interpret it is, is that you're just jumping in because you're excited about what you're talking about and you do that with your girlfriends. They don't care but they're not the person you're trying to date and get to know. They're not the person you're trying to flirt with. When you're trying to flirt with the man, you have to make him feel like he's valued. You have to make him feel like his words are valuable to you. You have to make him feel like he matters. And if you're cutting him off when he's talking, that's not active listening. What it communicates to him is that, damn, she don't really care what I'm talking about. Damn, she likes the sound of her own voice more than she likes the sound of my voice. Damn, she's inconsiderate and rude. And although he may be polite, he's going to kind of shut down a little bit and he'll talk less and less and less and less and before you know it, he's no longer engaging with you. So for me, one of the things that I do when I am actively listening and when I'm actively engaging is that I talk to him in such a way where I am consciously and intentionally trying to listen so that I can remember everything that he says. Now I do that for a specific reason because when I respond, I like to respond with questions to make him go deeper. Why? Because I'm trying to get to know him to see if he's a good fit for me. Flirting is not just about getting a man to want me. Flirting is about me attracting him to me so that I can learn as much about him as possible, as quickly as possible, so that I can determine if he's worth my time, all right? So when he's talking, I'm listening so that I can determine what my follow-up questions are. So he's talking and he goes da 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 talking about his childhood, talking about whatever. I'm like, wow, so when you did that, how'd that make you feel? Or when that happened, what were you even thinking? Or what happened next? I'm doing this and he's engaging, engaging, engaging. He feels heard, he feels excited that I'm listening to him. And what I get out of 
of it is that I get to learn more about him so that I can determine where we should go from here. All right, so our next tip is this. Make him feel like a king, darling. Compliment him, but don't just compliment him on some basic stuff that everybody compliments him on. So if he's got a nice body, don't be talking about, oh, your body looks so nice. Do you go to the gym a lot? Or if he's got a nice car, don't just compliment the car. Every chicken head on earth is complimenting him on his car. That's why none of them have landed him yet. You need to compliment him on things that typically would go unnoticed. So let me tell you this, I'm not an amateur at this. I go above and beyond in order to identify things that are special about the guy that I'm trying to flirt with so that I can flirt in a very effective manner. So let me tell you one of my things I might do. Not saying I've done this before, but I might do this. I may go to his Instagram. And I may scroll back on that Instagram, go real far back. And I'm trying to see were there any hobbies that he has that he doesn't post about a lot. So for example, maybe he's someone who likes to draw every now and again. Maybe he's in a band. Maybe he considers himself to be a musician on the side or whatever it may be. I'm searching for those things that clearly are a part of his life, but that he may not talk about a whole lot or he may not be posting about a whole lot. So that the next time I'm around him, I can find a Way just to bring it up just a little bit just to sprinkle it in there so we'll be talking and I'll be like so when was you going to tell me that you were an amazing painter he was like what how you know I was a dye paint I don't know maybe I was just kind of peeking around somewhere maybe maybe a little birdie put some in my ear oh yeah yeah, yeah. I like to paint every now and then. I don't do it very often but I do like to paint every now and then I'm like okay well you know Maybe you'll paint me something one day. Oh, for real? Yeah, I love it. I love your painting. So be sincere. Compliment him on something that you really do feel the compliment about. But the key is this. Complimenting him on things that often go overlooked within his life or things that are just not commonly acknowledged about him. When you do that, you are really telling him that I'm interested in you and I'm interested in you beyond the surface level stuff. I'm telling you this, masculine energy men have the same desire that you have, which is to be validated, to be seen, and to feel like they matter. And so when you compliment them on things that you know they're not commonly complimented on, you end up touching a special place within them that makes them feel really, really, really good about being in your presence. And the thing about a man is this, is that he remembers how you make him feel more than anything else, okay? You think that when he leaves you, he's thinking about that fat roll that, that you didn't cover up too well when you hung out with him. You think he's thinking about the fact that your hair was not done as nicely as you would have wanted. You think he's thinking about the fact that you was wearing shoes that did not really match your dress that day. He is not thinking about that. What he's thinking about is how he feels when he's around you. What he's thinking about is how he wants to feel the next time he's around you. So what I'm telling you is that one of the most powerful ways to flirt with a masculine energy man is to compliment him in such a way that it makes him feel really, really, really good in areas that he's not commonly complimented on. It works like a charm. The next tip is to say his name. Like Beyonce says, say my name, say my name, baby. Say his name when you're talking to him. Say his name in conversation, sprinkle it in there. It's something about him hearing his name that comes across as very flirtatious. It comes across like you're really interested in him. So let me give you an example. I'm talking to a guy and we're in the middle of a conversation and I'm commenting on something he said. I'm like, James, you are so funny. Why are you always so funny? Or James, you know, you made a really good point when you said blah, da, 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 da. It pulls him in and strategically it also pulls his attention so that if he's zoning out a little bit, because sometimes we all zone out, it pulls him back, okay? It's like what the school teachers used to do when they were in school and they would say, you know, well, Sarah, da, 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 you look up, huh, huh? Oh, she was talking to me. You see what I'm saying? So it keeps his intention, it keeps him engaged, but it also makes him feel like you are recognizing him. Now, the final tip on how to flirt, baby, this is the most powerful tip. In fact, if you're watching this right now, click share on this video so that other people can get this tip as well, all right? The most powerful tip on how to flirt is to walk fully within your feminine power. Here's the thing you have to remember. Masculine energy men are most attracted to your feminine energy. They love when you walk in a room and you walk with an air of confidence and positivity. In fact, studies have proven that men are more attracted to people who walk with confidence and with positivity. Meaning that when you walk in the room and your head is up and you have a smile on and you're invited 
exciting and you come across as positive, you are more likely to get attention from the men in that room than someone who may be dressed beautifully, who may have the most amazing body, but she's got her head down on the ground, or she's got a, or she's got a stank attitude that makes people feel like she's not really open or inviting of other people. So what I tell people is this, when you walk into a room and you know that there are potential kings in that room, you make sure that the way that you walk has your head, your, your chin for that matter, be level with the ground, okay? It's level with the ground. So you're not walking with your head up, looking high to Diddy, nor are you walking looking down at the ground. You're walking simply making sure that your chin is level with the ground. So you walk like that. It's good for your posture anyway, baby. And it makes your girls look good too. So you're walking like this when you walk in the room, all right? Your face should always, always, always have at least a light smirk or a smile on it. People should see that you are in a good mood. They don't have to know why you're in a good mood. They just need to know you're in a good mood. And even if you're in a terrible mood, fake it on your face, baby. You're here to land a king, not to broadcast to the world that you just stubbed your toe. So you walk through that room with a nice light smile on it, okay? And then when you communicate and talk to people, you're looking them in the eyes. Even if you're not communicating with words, they're just looking at you, you look at them right back. You do all that kind of stuff. When you do that, you're gonna be the kind of woman where men are gonna be like, oh my God, who is she? And some, some women, the chicken heads, are gonna be like, mm, who she thinks she is? In fact, that's my goal when I come in the room. Because I want the men to say, mm, who is that? Who, who is he? And I want the chicken heads to be like, mm, who you think he is? Because if I know that I'm, if I know they both saying that, then I'm doing my job, baby. I'm not here to be, to be conceited or arrogant or to hurt nobody's feelings. I'm simply here to let my light shine bright. Because when I let my light shine bright, then I am able to be a magnet for attracting in the kinds of men and the kind of attention that I want so that I can find my king. If you like this video, what I want you to do is like, comment, share, and of course subscribe. And share this video with other people, baby. This is information that can literally help someone to find their king and hopefully it'll help you to find yours too. I'm Malcolm MJ Harris. I love, 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 love getting your recommended topics. So feel free to comment below this video and let me know any other topics that you'd like me to cover.